Now, a lot of people use this plugin to do the patterns in as well, but I find it quite fiddly to get all these patterns right. You know, you can space them around, do different timings and do it like that. I tend to just find the chord that I like and then I'll export that chord. Um, so I'll just go back to what it was a second ago. We don't even want a progression on there. Um, so what I tend to do is just get the one card. So if I just bring that off, I'll show you one more time, nice and quickly. Bring it in. Go D minor. Now what I did with the, that card that I showed you a second ago is I added a flavor to it. So I believe I added a six. I might have been a seventh on there. You can also add inversions to these as well. These are just going to add different levels to those chords. You can add a second octave, make it higher up, and change the complexity of the chord here. You get a nice thicker chord out of it. And that's just personal preference, you know, on, on how you want it to be. Most of the time, I keep them quite simple. They don't have to be crazy, you know. It's all dependent on what you're after. You can also use, I love this website here. So uh, it's called pianokeyboardguide.com. Okay. Now, if you go to this website, you can actually search for chords in a scale of a certain, um, chords in the key of a certain scale. So for this one, which is chords in A minor. Okay. So you go down, it'll tell you all the chords that will fit in A minor. Okay, so you could maybe use an A minor chord, obviously, but then you can get like B diminished chords, C major chords. This is probably the easiest one to use because A minor is literally all the white notes. It's as easy as you get, basically, when you're using a scale. And this website is great to use if you're not using plugins to help you out. And I still use this quite a lot because I, sometimes I just like to see it face to face and you can start to learn them a bit yourself as well. Instead of, you know, just relying on a plugin to do it all the time, you can come in and start to learn different chords and start to implement them with the scale of your track. Um, now there's lots of different ways of going about it as well. So you could do it this way. So the one that the track that I've been using was uh, D minor. So you can just do it on Google. You just, you know, uh, chords in D minor. Internet is being great today. Uh, so here we go, just ch change that about, cards in D minor, and those just start to pop up at the top. Dead easy, yeah? So you can start to play around with these different cards and start to use them in your music. Now what I've got going on on this arpeggiator is I've got it randomizing and changing as it moves ahead. So you can have different styles in your app as well. The style in the app will tell you where uh, through the notes how it's going to go. So it might go up and down through the notes. It might go down and then back up again. Now, most of the time I'll use up, up, or up, down. And then sometimes I'll go to random, which we're going to have a little look a bit later, but you can just go through them, play around with them. Each one is good and it's just good in its own different way. So I'm just going to go through this here and I'm going to show you what it does at the end here. So we've got some automation on the arpeggiator. <laughs> Now what's happening there is the speed of the arpeggiator is changing, so it's getting faster and slower, but there's another part to it called steps. Now the steps, if we listen to this app, I'm just going to play it by hand here. Pull it back. Now if I change the steps, it's going to add an extra octave in the steps. So if I go like this, I'm just going to change the filter so we can hear it. What's going on there is it's adding an extra octave so it's going higher up. Dun, 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 dun. So you can get some different elements to your chord there as well. My, my 
way of working is I will always pick my scale first, but that's my way of uh, my way of working because I need to. I like to know where my kick is. I like to know where my bass is going to be, and I find it quicker to start in a key and then just go go ahead do you know what i mean is where sometimes if i if i start creating all my drums first and you know a lot of drums do have tone to them so if you're using bongos and you're using uh congas and like 808 toms they've got notes in them so all those notes need to be in scale as well and they need to be in keys so you might make an amazing drum loop and then go right i'm gonna make this in d minor but then all your drums are out of key so then you just go back and then you have to change it all um so my personal way of working is I always find it, kind of find it first. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'll get into a track and go, this ain't working. You know, this scale's not working for this track, so I will switch it up. But the beauty of what I've shown you there is it's very easy to change then because all you've got to do is go through on those little scale functions and go, right, I don't want it in F minor anymore. I want it in D minor. Just flick them all to D minor or flick them all to whichever one you want, and it's done for you, you know. Uh, if you're using the samples, then you would have to go back and change the samples. So. Hi, this is Roger Sanchez. Hi, this is Lenny Fantana. Hey guys, this is Jackie. Hi guys, Amber D here. Hi, I'm Paul Maddox. And this is Saytek. Hi, this is Kyle V, and you're watching Mix Masters TV, where you can access world class producers in your studio every single day. Mix Masters.